Welcome back to Curse, Code, and Crown, a live play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition podcast featuring a fully original world and campaign. I am the wizard Cronox, observer of time. Curse, Code, and Crown features our regular voiceover artists and improvisers, Laura Elizabeth as the accountant Eta, Tyler Hewitt as Maka Deathcap, and Ryan LaPlante as Duncan Kindano, alongside our dungeon master, the incredible Tom McGee. So get ready for an adventure including thrills, chills, and hope for a brighter tomorrow. It's time for Curse, Code, and Crown! Duncan, your uh, muscles still aching uh, from the combat. Um, your, your sword heavy in your hand. Um, you hear uh, the, the voice of the, the announcer kind of echoing off the, the inside of, of your head. Um, and they say, uh, welcome new champion to the, uh, order of champions. We, <laughs> we, we say that a bit too much. I'm afraid you will find that there are some redundancies in our rules and our systems by entering the order. You have agreed to a tournament, the likes of which Gren rarely sees once every hundred years, the greatest champions of the realm face off uh, in a battle to see who can win. And admittedly, we've been in a deadlock for some time. Your defeat of Eisenhorn El Ravan is quite an upset. We haven't had fresh blood in the tournament for a time, but with him out of the way, anything is now possible. You will recognize other champions as you make your way around the world, but understand they will recognize you as well and can strike at any time. Eisenhorn was fond of setting up formal duels, but our rules require only that you are in the tournament for it to count now that you are amongst the order. You can't just go around murdering random people. That, that's not sporting. But now that you have been marked well, it's open season. We do hope you have fun. And who knows, if you rise high enough to the ranks, perhaps we will meet ourselves in combat one day. Dawn Breaker. Uh, and with that, the uh, the mark fades, and um, you uh, you kind of like your 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 vision clears, uh, and you find yourself in the uh, the small room. Um, uh, Darna is uh, is like hella impressed by all of this, um, and is uh, is is again just kind of looking on in awe. You get the sense that you know, even though she was on friendly terms with Eisenhorn, um, you know. Uh, Someone who calls himself the Eternal Hunter, who's like a vampire who can step through mirrors. Mm. Not exactly like it's kind of like becoming friends with a bully in, in elementary school. You're like, I just kind of don't want to be in your way, but I don't love this relationship. Yeah. And I, you know, this isn't the best for me. So um, she uh, there's an air of relief um, to her and uh, in, into the room. But um, of course, you, you have uh, accomplished the task. Uh, set out for you and and Maka's trial is nigh. Is there anything else? Uh, do you want to convey anything to your companions? Do you want to leave um, Golden uh, it's the Golden Morning we're hanging out in right now? I think uh, the first thing Duncan would want to do is go over and collect that poisoned Assassin's Creed dagger that Ravnos was very much a fan of because that feels like something that would go very well under a copper. You know, just something to kind of move forward with if there's going to be a lot of dirty fighting in this weird tournament, then he'd like to get in on that. Yeah, yeah, some kind of legacy of the first blade. Yeah, yeah, Assassin's Creed. Um, cool. Well, you got to level it up because right now it won't do instant kills when you press triangle anymore. It's a real bummer for all involved. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's uh, you'll need to to probably spend a night tooling it uh, to fit it under your your coppers and that sort of thing. So think of it more as like a next time you have significant downtime. Um, you know, on the road or, or what have you, you, you can take her. It's probably not like a do it overnight before the trial situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, you can mark down uh, a poisoned assassin's wrist blade. And um, the stats for that, uh, I can. I've made a note of it so we can do that between sessions if you want. If cool. You... Like I've got them right here. If you want. All right, let's but, go for it. Then. Um, no, I'm in. All right. Cool. So uh, it's uh, plus six to hit. Um, although that was using his modifiers, so we'll we'll have to talk through what yours are. Uh, it deals one d four plus five damage. Okay. Uh, and then it requires a D 
DC 15 con save from the target. Wow, that's high. Or they are poisoned. Okay, decent. Yeah, so what's his modifier? We can we can reverse engineer the modifier. See, that I will actually have to dig for because I just have his like quick stats. So just hang tight on that, that and we'll we'll figure that out later. Beautiful. Um, I'll also say the uh the the poison effect um for you as a player character will be uh a once daily kind of situation. So like okay. when you spring it, it it has that effect the first time, but then the uh you, you need to wait for the blade to recharge. You can still use it as a blade, like mm -hmm. after that, but just to prevent you from, you know. Just poison poking a thousand people, being like, ah, they're all poison. Fuck you. Um, you know. Oh, so it like isn't that. it isn't pure Assassin's Creed. We're talking the new Assassin's Creed, not like That's Assassin's what I'm Creed Three Brotherhood, <laughs> where you're just like, shink, shink, no, shink, no, shink, no. Shink. You gotta pay to upgrade it slowly but surely, and then you'll feel so satisfied when you can finally do it. Um, and you know, at hour one hundred, just stab, stab. It'll feel so good. Um, but. Um, yeah, I just want to prevent you from being that guy I tried to, like, kill Castro with the poison umbrella tip. Like, just walking around, like, just poking everyone, being like, I don't need to do damage, you're all poison. Um, but, uh, yes, <laughs> so uh, so you've got that. Um, again, it's it's it'll need some some retooling to, to kind of fit your your, your stuff, but um, otherwise it's yours. Uh, and then I think he'll turn to Darn a heave crop and say, were you aware that I was going to be entered into a tournament for the rest, apparently, of... I don't know, my life or until everyone's dead if I took out Eisenhorn? Or is this a surprise to you as well? She, like, looks at you, like, with a, a, an appropriate amount of kind of incredulity and just says, like, no, he was just a spooky vampire I owed a favor to. I didn't know he was part of some crazy order. All right. Well, admittedly, it's not the worst thing being entered into a tournament where everyone had to murder someone to enter because I'm sort of here for justice, which means they're all guilty. And if I do well enough, I get to meet the person in charge, which is sort of like the best kind of undercover work someone like me could ever do. In that case, you're welcome. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, well, I've had my ass thoroughly kicked, so I don't know how the rest of you are doing, but I'm thinking we might need to rest up before this trial. Uh, Maka will look to Darna and say, uh, you will find me innocent of the crimes I have been accused of, yes? Um, and, um, she gives you the, the smile of, like, a career criminal and gambler and just says, I only see innocent people here. Hmm. Hmm. Good. Mm. Yes. This is... I'm just like, wait, does that mean that that you will like say he's innocent, right? And it's just like turtle shoulders drop, <laughs> and just like it, it just gives you a full look of like where did you find this one? Like what pumpkin wagon did she fall <laughs> off of? It says like yes, obviously. All right, I just wanted to like be sure because like it could have been like oh I only see innocent people here, and then like but he's guilty and I'm lying. I I, I don't know. I mean, to Can't be clear, the that the could. That could still absolutely be true if she's trying to fool you, but she's agreed to do what you want now. So I think we can kind of take this one on hope at Gwendolyn, this point. Do you want to roll me an insight check to see if she's lying? <laughs> sure. Uh, that's a 20 total. Cool. She's not lying. All right. You're this, all right, then. This was the final task assigned to us by Murdoch Truegood. Hmm. Rest, that. rest would be in order. Yes. All right. So let's go rest up, and I can bandage my wounds. Right. So um, with that, you return to jail. <laughs> Given that you're on this this kind of like uh, work release program. Yep. Um, and um, again, the, the cells are, are fairly well appointed. Um, you uh, you arrive to find um, uh, Ita just kind of like vaguely frustratedly flipping through documents that, that have been left for her. um yeah. the the as as uh you know would be expected um despite getting a, a bit more context um from uh from kind of her her prison visit um she is is now just kind of left sorting through <laughs> sorting through documents mm -hmm. after Ren's visit, you are uh, just kind of sorting through uh, the documents that, that have been left for you. Um, as, as you, you kind of determined earlier, um, 
these are not in any particular order, which is just a real pain in the ass to you. Like, it, yeah. and the, I think the thing that's probably most irksome, Ida, is that you are well aware that the like that the um, consortium of Bleen keeps excellent records. They just fucking chose not to give you well kept records, right? Um, but uh, yeah, um, what to, aside from that, like, what is what is a downtime thing Ida would do in jail when she's bored? Aside from sorting through these papers, like, I'm basically looking for your like, um, you know, great escape throwing a rubber ball against the wall. Like, what's your you know, the, the sad harmonica playing inmate, like what, what's your, your, uh, stuck in jail task. Oh, she's, she's counting upwards in prime numbers for sure. It's a, it's a wonderful mental exercise. Laura, you just, you're painting a target on this character for me. Like just, <laughs> just man, uh, this is too late in this adventure to introduce a team of snipers that only want to kill Ida. Um, all right. So she's, uh, she's working her way up through, through prime numbers. Um, I, as I know nothing about prime numbers, it just jumped to Amazon prime and it's just like, season one, no. season yeah. two, season no. three canceled season one, one. season <laughs> two canceled. <laughs> like it's just that over and over again. And then you hit uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel that they're just going to keep running forever. And you're like, uh oh, season six, season seven. I do love the idea, eight. though, that Don't Amazon watch. Prime's like seasons go like one, two, three, five, seven, eleven, and just go up. That would make me really happy. So weird. Cause, you know, like I, I, the, the boys, like it seemed like they were building to something. And then suddenly they jumped 10 years into the future. It's like I missed a couple seasons. <laughs> Super weird, uh, but you know I'm enjoying baby. these robots. Um, <laughs> in any case, um, so um, yeah, you you're, you're working on that, uh, Ida. I'm curious, um, would you be recording any of this on the walls of the prison, and or is there prison graffiti that uh, would interfere with this or mimic this? That you're frustrated by. Um. I, I kind of like to think that like someone else has like recorded days mm-hmm. like and just like and I'm just like I feel like I'm like crossing them out. I'm trying I'm only keeping like the prime numbers. So I'm like four goes basically every single even number goes <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, it, I, th- I think we could safely say then that for Ita, she looks at that and she's like. Well, clearly they meant to be recording prime numbers and they failed. Yeah. So I'm going to correct their work. Yeah. Um, well, it's yeah. like, it's just like, no one would like just count like one, two, three, four. Five. Like there's no, there's nothing interesting about that. There's yeah, no great. mental She's exercise. She's not taking in that. it as like, this is me keeping my sanity. It's literally just yeah. like, a, they did math bad. Okay. I like that. So um, you enter to find Ida, like um, trying and kind of failing to like etch scratched numbers off a wall um as best she can and um uh you know your your cell is is waiting for you maka um the uh the warden uh, just kind of nods to you weirdly like you get the sense that he kind of doesn't quite know what to make of this whole situation there's a bit of of kind of like this is standard procedure but also you've been out in the world so maybe you have proved your innocence he just won't know till tomorrow so he's in a kind of an odd position where he can't be a, a dick about it because he doesn't know if you're guilty or not. Um, but uh, yeah, you're able to get in there. Um, Duncan, uh, I think it's it's fairly easy to get um, uh, basic medical supplies uh, brought in. Um, uh, Murdoch uh, comes in um, uh, being led by Dennis and um, uh, she just uh, sees you. Uh, oh, sorry, doesn't see you, of course. Um, she comes in and... Uh, you know, she hears her asking for uh, medical supplies. So she's got a, um, a doctor's bag um, with her. Uh, and she just says, hey, so uh, word on the street is that one of you is pretty fucked up. So I brought some bandages. I brought some salves. Uh, we've got some, uh, some, some great products. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, our friend here, the accused, uh, may have made these at one point. So uh, I'm just going to leave these here. Um, whichever one of you is uh, the most fucked up, uh, you can take what you like. Courtesy of the fine people uh, of of Bleen. There you go. All right. All right. Great. Great. So how are we doing? How are we doing? Maka? Maka? How are we doing? I smash <laughs> those salves and stuff like that. Oh, hey. All right. Well, uh, someone's pretty eager, it sounds like. Uh, Dennis, you uh, you make sure I don't step in any of this. All right. All right. Great. And like Dennis, we, we cut to Dennis just like sitting there doing that like frog ribbit thing where it's just like completely dis just disinterested 
Um, I'm very much imagining Dennis's facial reaction. This is a weird poll, but as the uh, chameleon from uh, Tangled, if you haven't seen Tangled, A, it's great. B, there's just a fucking sassy chameleon in that thing that is a fucking hero. So just like, <laughs> you know, froggy eyes, kind of like slightly tilted frog head and just like kind of breathing ribbitly uh, staring at, at Maka with kind of like, what the fuck, man? Uh, kind of look. Uh, but she says, all right, well, um, I guess uh, you could use the bandages if you broke, you know, if you cut yourself breaking the, the gifts I brought you, uh, I suppose. But uh, hey, the important thing is, uh, you know, you're doing what feels good, right? You're, you're making yourself feel feel better there. Uh, cool. <laughs> the camera pans over to see Duncan. Just he'd been reaching for the stuff to heal himself and he's completely fucked up. And then Marcus smashes it. He's just looking at them in shock. Like that was a thing that could have fixed me. And then instead, now I have nothing. You got bandages? <laughs> Unlike rubbing alcohol. So, Mark, I... I'm hoping you have some sort of magic left that'll help heal me now that there are no salves. Am I able to cast healing magic or am I in the no magic zone? Um, I feel like this is a no magic zone, but yeah. if you needed to get him to healers, um, there are certainly healers in, in Bleed. Also, he's not accused of anything, so like he could... You could leave, yeah. He, he can he can leave. He's established that he, he's kind of yeah. able to move. Uh, Maka will point to the mess and say, uh, this is the result. This is a part of their process. This perversion of Jossie's will. This heretofore unimaginable removal of energy and life from the cycle. It sickens me. I mean, I understand that, but it's already been removed from the cycle. Now it just has no use. Correct. Now you meant it has no use as a mess. He meant it has no use because it's been taken out of the cycle. <laughs> You're a strange turtle. And I may regret having been stabbed so much for you, but this is where we are. I guess I've got to go outside and find some turtle to heal me who maybe won't use the salves. Um, yeah. And uh, Murdoch is just like, she, she's got a grin plastered on at this point, but you can, she's like tilting her head towards you, kind of like trying to figure out what the fuck is happening. But she has no context for any of this. So Murdoch says, uh, all right, listen, uh, I'm getting the, the uh, idea here that uh, there might be some um, unresolved issues around how things work here in Bleed. And you know what? I totally get that. It's a strange place full of strange people doing strange things. And uh, 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 Mr. Deathcap, uh, obviously, uh, I, I wouldn't want to interfere with any of your processes and whatever you're, you're working through dealing with. That's all great. So um, uh, uh, Mr. Kindano. Uh, look, if, if you, you, it sounds like you need some medical attention. I assume you're the one who's fucked up. Uh, tell you what, um, me and Dennis, uh, we can, we can take you to a, a local healer. Uh, they'll do their work and, um, just kind of leans, leans and says away from Mr. I've got some issues with how we heal people. Uh, and then now uh, you can just come back and we can all, um, you know, uh, uh, fight back against the blasphemy, uh, together. Okay. Is that, does that, is that agreeable that sounds, to everybody? That sounds great. Thank you. All right. All right. That's great. That's great. Um, do any of you need anything else? Uh, I almost hesitate to ask. Not you in the other cell. I've, I've done as much as I can do for you. Uh, but uh, any of the, the rest of you guys in, in this cell, in, in what I'm calling the best cell, you know, there are other cells, but this one uh, is pretty good. Pretty good cell. Pretty good cell. Could I have a hammer or a mallet? She just like takes a breath and she's like, of course, sure. Hammer them out. Do you need any other construction tools in here? Is there anything else? You, you're going to raise a barn? Uh, what, what, no, what I've just got some dents that I need to like work out. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. You're the haunted armor lady. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Great. I can, I, we can do that. We can absolutely do that. Okay. Hey, um, uh, uh, I, I assume tall, dark and bloody. Let's, uh, let's go get you patched up and, um, uh, uh, you know, Maka, you keep working on those issues, bud, but, you know, be sure you're ready for the defense because we've got a big trial in a few hours. All right, get some breath. 
Yes, we performed all of the tasks you assigned to us. Uh, and she just uh, claps loudly and like rubs her hands together and she says, that is the best news I've heard all day. And I've heard some pretty good news today, but that is the best of the news that I've heard. Listen, let me go get your uh, friend patched up before he uh, bleeds too much on the floor here. Got to tell you, the cleaning costs are <laughs> rather large. You wouldn't expect it from the look of the place, but uh, it's a real bitch. So let's let's go get him patched up. Uh, we got to make sure it looks good for court. Um, very glad to hear that. That is great news. We're going to need each and every vote uh you know we don't want a 12 angry turtle situation so uh good work um just kind of points it gives like finger guns to all of you and then um she uh just like um like tugs on uh dennis's leash um and he just kind of saltily turns around um and starts hopping away and he stops and like looks back at you um duncan to make sure you're following yeah i'm following let's do this uh, and the frog just like narrows his eyes and nods and then hops off, uh, leading the two of you out to get healed. So the evening um, the evening passes. Uh, Maka, is there anything you'd want to do um, while Duncan and um, uh, Gwendolyn heal up and kind of uh, get their shit together? Is there anything that you specifically would want to do or think about? Um, we do have the outstanding um, slip of paper that fell from uh, Edelton uh, Branch Rain's book, I was but say, I believe Duncan, Duncan has, has that. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he so. would read it, but Maka does not know about it yet because Duncan doesn't <laughs> know if it'll break the turtle before the trial. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so with that uh, in Duncan's possession, we'll come back around to that in a second. But uh, Maka, after um, Duncan and uh, Murdoch leave, is there anything you would do? Uh, I mean, it sounds bleak, but we're still pretty fresh off of in in terms of like in game time, though, we're pretty fresh off the revelation that, you know, he's he's been exploited and the cycle has been exploited mm-hmm. in such a harmful way. Um, I think he would just try to sleep so he doesn't have to think his thoughts. <laughs> I yep. think he just needs to shut it down. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's roughly where, where he'd be at. Um. So yeah, Maka, you uh, you fall into a, uh, a a mercifully dreamless sleep. Um, I think uh, to some extent, sleep has always been a uh, a place of comfort for you um, because you are so closely attuned to the idea of kind of death and and uh, sleep. In a lot of ways, can feel like the most uh, connected you can be to Jossie and to the cycle. Um, also, given, um, I think a lot of your dreams of late have been processing the root folks um, sort of stored uh, history. Yep. Um, so uh, this is a a, a void sleep um, for you. Uh, you get the sense that um, the the root folks memories have been integrated enough into the cluster that they kind of know to give you some space. Um, mm, okay. There's a, yeah, there just seems to be a, they feel less and less like something that's been grafted into the cluster and more like something, the cluster has changed as a result of their integration, but it feels um, more in tune with it. Um, yeah, a graft is probably the best way to, to think about this. There is still obviously, like you can feel the difference, but it, it is uh, a combined, uh, unified thing now. Um, that said, um, you do not sleep well. Um, obviously, your your mind is very troubled, but also the uh, the cluster continues to hum and and shift with the the interference of kind of all of these non rotting creatures. And this again, uh, distinctly different from the other places you found where the cluster has been disrupted either by a lack of um, uh, biolium and a biological. Like there's, there's been no presence of glomer anywhere, but also places where there's been like a perversion of it in some way. Here it's just uh, discordant. So okay. a dreamless sleep, but uh, not a particularly restful one as you kind of toss and turn, um, being robbed of, uh, of the um, oblivion that you, you so desire uh, over the course of this evening. Uh, meanwhile, um, as you have this restless sleep, Gwendolyn is just hammering dents out of her armor. Yep. Um, paying no mind uh, to the uh, 
I think um, Ita is probably doing a polite, like, I guess I got to sleep now, but is just clearly giving you, like, side eye um, from behind her glasses. Uh, Ita wears glasses, right? Yes, she does. Yeah. So I, I, for whatever reason, I imagine her sleeping in her glasses in the cell because it's like, yes, she doesn't want to leave them anywhere. So it's just that constant, like, my roommate is being loud, but I guess I have to deal with it. Uh, college situation. <laughs> um, but uh, Gwendolyn, you are, uh, of course, uh, cheerfully oblivious to this uh, because you are single mindedly uh, focused on on hammering out the dance. Um, what is uh, what does it feel like being back? Uh, like there I think there, there must be something. um comforting to some extent um, to hammering out dents in your armor because weirdly it's, it's a very grounding process. I'd imagine, you know, like you're, you're back in the suit. Um, nothing has like threatened you in a serious, like existential way in a while, like lots of like horror going on, yeah. on around you, but like, you know, no one's ripped you from your armor lately, which is honestly a fucking treat these days. Um, where's, where's Gwendolyn at with, with kind of being, being back and um, spending this time, in a lot of ways, like I think it's it's the equivalent of like uh, one of the, the rituals I've been using to say sane during uh, COVID apocalypse has been like uh, I got like a safety razor and learned to shave with that and like it's just a nice like grounding like I am spending time doing yeah. a weird little ritual that keeps me kind of in in the swing of things and and kind of grounds me in my own body. What does it feel like for her to be be dealing with that now? Um. <laughs> I think Gwendolyn still occasionally like she feels really comfortable. Like she felt, it felt like very much like, ah, it's me again being back in the armor. Mm -hmm. But I I think she cycles a little bit through the feeling of like, oh yes. It's like, all right, I'm back. I'm back to being me back to being me. She like hammers it. I was like, oh yes. Hammering. Yes. Yes. This is great. Smooth. And then she kind of looks at her. I was like, oh God, this is me. I got, nope, this is me. Yep. I'm, this is who, oh, oh, but this is who I am. Oh, okay. Oh, it just goes on and on. Like sure, that. sure, sure. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> I also imagine um, much like any, any dented armor, like you can hammer it out. So it's mostly fine, but also kind of, um, it must be incredibly strange for a human brain to have to wrap its head around. Like this is the equivalent of a scar now. Yeah but it's also an artificial substance. So it feels like I could fix it, but it can't really be fixed. And like, I mean, it's like dentic or scratching your car, right? Where you're like, ah, this isn't the end of the world, but it just, the, the thing is slightly different now. Um, okay, cool. So, so still some existential horror, just like, uh, like small kind of accepting, like existential discomfort, not horror. Exactly. Perhaps. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Cool. Great. Right. Um, and uh, Duncan, you're, uh, you're taken to a, a clinic um and uh this place is very fancy so um you know you're uh, obviously we're we're in the um kind of out in the imported city uh so it's a it's a very uh, i think the the best like kind of modern equivalent would be a an upscale uh cosmetic surgery clinic so it just has that like very designed look <clears throat> you can see um uh it's it's almost got a bit of an apple store vibe like it's it's brightly lit um, by kind of um, long uh, um, strips of um, some kind of um, metal that uh, are, are generating light that's bouncing off um, a white ceiling to give the place a, a pleasant, warm, if slightly sterile glow. Um, there are interlocking panels uh, kind of on all the walls. From your research as a, as a Dawnbreaker, I don't think you paid much mind to the Apex Institute. They seemed for lack of a better term, less fantastical to you. So you need to be aware of what they did functionally, but th there was nothing um, sort of like sexy or adventurous about it. So I think it was the, that was the part you begrudgingly read because it just sounded like an organization and like you had enough of that. It sounded like a bureaucracy. You had enough of that in, in uh, Orville. Um, but this, this tracks with kind of their style um, of this kind of very like high tech feel. Um, which tracks with the the imported city. That said, uh, it's grimy. Um, it is dirtier in here than you would expect. Uh, and um, the the sense you get coming in uh, again, having observed this in Orville several times, is with everything that's going on in Belen um, and the the uh, disruption of the um, Sandara uh, industry and everything else. Um, 
it's not going great for this clinic. So in the best of times, very slick. Now it's like one of those weird, you know, like weirdly nice places in a dystopia where you're like, okay, but the sky is smog and there's fire everywhere, but cool. Your little building is like, okay. Um, and there is a somewhat harried um, uh, turtle uh, healer who comes out to greet you. Um, she's wearing a, uh, a, a sort of a clinic. She's like, I never say this word, clinistician, um, like, like a, you know, white lab coat, but very much in like what you'd see at a makeup counter. So it's the, the cut is too nice to be functional. The material is too nice to be functional. Um, but it is of course, slightly grimy as, as the rest of the space is. Um, and, uh, despite, um, the very put together look, um, even though total physiology is kind of hard to read. Um, you can tell that she's she's run a bit ragged. Um, there, you know, her eyes are a bit more sunken. Um, skin seems almost uh, a little bit loose around her face um, in a way that almost gives her a bit of a bulldog expression, um, which is odd on a, a turtle because normally their their skin is obviously so tight to their little reptilian heads. Um, and uh, she comes out and says, uh, "Oh, customer, finally." Uh, Oh, um, I, 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 you'll have to forgive me. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. What, what manner of creature are you? I'm a human. Human. Can Fascinating. I... Uh, well, uh, forgive my ignorance, but I assume uh, the red stuff coming out of you is blood, huh? That is correct. You're nailing it so far. Well, fantastic. I. Didn't come by these by failing. She points to some degrees that you can't actually read through the glass because the the glass is so grimy, but she's clearly very proud of them. And she just says, uh, Murdoch, uh, you're good for this, right? And Murdoch just gives her a classic like Jack Nicholson smile of like, ha, of, of course. <laughs> and um, the doc just kind of nods and says, all right, um, well, come on in. I'll, I'll, I'll see you back here. Um, so you, you're brought into uh, the back room of this clinic and um, kind of you hop up on a little table and um, she takes down some um, small uh, pots of, um, of sort of uh, uh, Andara based materials. It's basically what Maka smashed, except they're all in like this very, very fancy, <laughs> expensive, like find them at a premium drugstore kind of things. Like they've clearly repackaged everything to seem fancier. But um, sure enough, as she starts to rub the salves um, into your your wounds, um, they, they start to feel better almost immediately. And you can kind of feel the uh, healing magic at work. Um, she's humming a, a kind of vaguely sa- um, rhythmless tune uh, to herself as she works. Uh, and uh, you have a couple moments kind of to yourself. Uh, Murdoch and Dennis are up front. Um, you're here. So if you did want to read that page or if you want to reflect on anything, you've got Yeah, no, man, let's read that page. That's the only thing he doesn't know. He can put things together once he's got all the pieces. Okay. So um, you unfold uh, the uh, the page and um, as as we, we, we discussed back in the Sunken Archive, uh, it's of a different material than the book. Uh, it looks less weathered. Um, so, so clearly written later. Um, and uh, Tirai Duncan, having seen a lot of like, particularly, I think when you were kind of um, working the docks in Orvel, like finding hastily scrawled messages, like you got pretty good at determining the nature of the writing, whether it was slow and deliberate or whether it was just like, I have to get this down. And this very much like this blots, this feels very, very hurried. Um, and uh, it is uh, entitled uh, A Confession. Um, so as you begin to read it, um, it, uh, is clearly written by, uh, Edelton, uh, Branch Rain, but sometime after his treaties, uh, and it begins with the, the ominous words, I was wrong. I was entirely and completely wrong. We not in, in my base ideas, those were awesome. And that's underlined twice. Um, but he says, uh, but the. The cost was was too high by, by bringing the materials out of the cycle. We've, I think, I think I've doomed us all. We must turn this around. If you find this, please, you must succeed where I have failed. There is but one hope I can think of. As we continue to corrupt uh, the Andara 
as we, we continue to, to spread poison throughout it, the system will slowly begin to corrupt, then die. At this point, if you're reading this, I have failed. And likely we are more than past the tipping point. Things have gone too far. I was rather too successful. And like that I was rather too successful is written very carefully and with some degree of pride. You can tell he kind of lives in that weird zone uh. of like, I may have, it's it's a bit of the like the, um, not Einstein, but like a lot of the guys who worked on Manhattan Project being like, we were very good at it. It's like, we probably shouldn't have been though, but still I was very good. Um, so he continues, um, the, the, the only hope I, I can conceive of is to um, re- renew the cluster by um, managing to reintegrate uh, non-corrupted Indara back into the cycle. Uh, the effects of it are, are so potent, so powerful, as indeed we've discovered with our work, that a, a pure sample untainted by my, my great devices may be enough to uh, restore the cluster to, to its previous state, slowly but surely, uh, uh, a counter-infection, if you will, an antibody released into the system. I fear, though, that we, we may have lost our chance here, too, for the only pure sample I know was handed to those uh, abominations, uh, the, the, the slaves, the, the humans. I can't imagine they would part with it, but... If you seek to restore the cluster, you must find that sample and reintroduce it. Otherwise, we are entirely doomed. Um, Duncan, can you roll me a perception check, please? Yes, I can. That is an eight. Um, there is There are some imperfections on this page that you can't quite understand um however uh you do know uh, a bookworm who spends all of her time thinking about such things so um although you're unable to um ascertain with an eight um what is off about this page you identify that there is something off about it and that ita might be able to uh to assist you in determining what what that off piece is all right so that's interesting. He's got a lot going on in his brain after this, then. He's got to get Ida to look at it to make sure whether or not it's true before he mm-hmm. shows it to Maka, because the last thing Maka needs is some sort of weird scam hope. And he hates this fucking city. The turtles have fucked everything up. Clearly, the ones in charge all knew what was going on or covered it up and were so corrupt that he kind of feels like the turtles are awash. There might, there probably isn't a way to bring justice to all the people at the top, but they seem to be doing it to themselves. But it's also weird that there are so many innocent turtles at the bottom who had nothing to do with this, and that's kind of screwed up. And on a personal level, fucking Darna heave crop making him join a tournament of murderers because she needed a favor, which he overheard but did not comment on the time, from the vampire because he murdered her business partner to help cover her debts. So he's also, I think the only thing he's 100% sure of leaving this conversation is that before he leaves town, he has to kill Darn Nahiv Krop to just like clear out the justice of the scenario right. of her. I will also say that um, you can probably pull a lot of parallels to Orvel from what you're seeing here in in Bleen um, in a way that might be a bit uncomfortable because I think there would be some comfort to the idea that only we fucked it up this badly and then realizing like, oh, no other people. Because honestly, the, the way you just described it is exactly what the court of Orvel read like. It's, it's yeah. like there are a bunch of people up top who are a bunch of assholes and corrupted like an otherwise pure thing. And then a bunch of people under them just being like, well, we don't know any better. Like, just thinking back to like the poor, like, chef's union guy having to sit through those meetings with like the King of Orville in his like stupid, like, giant chef's hat, just being like, fucking sure, man. Cool. Tax us more, I guess. What's a union? Yeah, <laughs> I think I think he sees some clear parallels there, only this was even worse because they've poisoned death. Like they've mm, fucked mm. up the whole world so badly it's gonna cost everybody. Orville just cost itself. And 100%. That's stupid and annoying. So this is like give Orville another hundred years or the ability to do this, and he knows they're capable of it. Yep. This is just now. So it's such a weird mess. If it was up to him, he'd probably put the entire leadership on trial and he doesn't think they'd make it, but like 
I mean, it sounds to me like Maka is pretty much going to put everyone on trial at his trial. I believe that was the, the conclusion we came to at the end of the last session, which was kind of like, I will return. Yeah, yeah. But it's not by trial. <laughs> so I think, yeah, that's he's just like, he's get, it, it's short term, get the letter to Ida. Slightly longer term, Darna Heathcroft doesn't make it out of this city. Uh, and long, long term, maybe justice, maybe try to find a way to save the regular turtles who didn't fucking choose any of this. Um, would you tell Maka what you've determined so far from from this uh, additional page he would need he would take the page to eat it first because if it's a fake he doesn't want to tell maka there's a way to save the god and have it not be true yeah that's a that's a nice thing you're doing that's a kind it's a kindness okay um so um we'll say uh, obviously you're going to recover a bunch of hp from kind of uh sleeping it off anyway but um this guarantees that you're back up to to kind of full rather than um close to full um cool. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, the cells work, um, you make your way back to the jail, uh, after the doc finishes treating you. Um, and, um, Ida is still, uh, trying, like pretending to sleep, but as you, you enter the jail, you can tell she is, uh, clearly faking it. I, I well, think yeah, because up. she says 105 and you're like, you know, that's not <laughs> a prime number. Something's off. He'll, he'll go over you know that. and sit down. We all know that. And just say, Eat, I'm, I'm sorry to wake you, uh, but I have this page and I need to know if it's genuine or not. I know there's something strange about it, but I don't know what that is. Can you take a look? Um, yeah, y- y- yes, of course. Honestly, I'm, I'm like out of her breath, like anything to distract me from this r- ruckus. Um, so she reads it. Um, yeah, so you read it, you get the same information. Uh, can you roll me a perception check at advantage, please? Totally. God, this is like a, a proper library use check in every other system. <laughs> I'm, I'm heartbroken we don't have that. <laughs> um, now, I do have like, does it have to be perception? No. Okay, because I was thinking, because like I use Arcana for checks like involving like putting together information from all my oh, knowledge. Oh, then yes. Yeah, the, yeah. And Arcana... I have expertise. I just want to rig the dice in my favor. Yeah, you know. sure. Go ahead. Yay. Uh, that is a 21. As I say, rig the dice. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, Ita, you can tell that uh, this is uh, a, a legitimate document. It hasn't been forged. Um, but the imperfections that Duncan was noticing and, and kind of alerted you to um, are that uh, you can see um, – a number of, of, of thin lines uh, or, or um, not really lines, I guess uh, is indentations um, uh, cross almost cross thatched against uh, the page. Mm. Um, you feel like someone may have traced this uh, that uh, someone has made a, a copy of this document and the strokes of their pencil clearly left little indentations that you're able to, uh, to track. But uh, it would seem that uh, someone has awareness of this, but choose, chose to leave it in the book. Hmm. Um, are there any are there any indentations that don't match the lettering? No, it looks like it was an exact copy. It was exact. Like, this okay. very much feels like a, a proper like vellum. No tracing. one like was like practicing their signature on the same page. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 no. You're um, you're actually kind of pleased. Uh, like, it's a cool discovery. That's like, okay, cool. Yes, I can see this. It just clearly looks like someone was making a carbon copy uh, right. for some reason or another. So it's like, I mean, this confession has been read before. There's another record of this. Uh, look at the indentations. What, and I'm just like showing like, look at the indentations. Like, obviously. Yeah, but what, is that, what does that mean? I understand someone's read it. I've read it. And there's indentations. Someone, what, wrote it? I don't, I don't get it. Copied it. All right. Oh, <laughs> I went into you, Duncan's accent. <laughs> you should, it's fine. Next time, next time you could just open with someone copied this. It will be good. Thank you very much. This is very useful. Uh, and then he'll go over to Mark and be like, wake up, turtle. <laughs> just like shake his shoulder. Mm. Mm. So what, I find an additional it? note back in the archives and I hadn't had a chance to read it, but it turns out there may have been a solution to saving your God. Something about a pure Andara sample that's been kept by the humans. Perhaps this is why your total party was going to deal with Orville. I'll show him the letter so he can read it and kind of catch up on the info. 
as someone who was part of the group that went to Orville, does this make any kind of sense to me? And I, am I able to draw any further conclusions from this information? Um, this actually fully tracks. You knew that um, there was uh, an issue plaguing the the people of Bleen that mm -hmm. um, uh, Presidente Umos was trying to solve. That's why you kind of went on your, your mission to Orville. Um, you never fully understood why you had to go with them other than the fact that they, they said it, it was, you know, life or death for the people of Bleen. Um, and that it might affect the cycle in some way, which is why you, you signed up. Yeah. But um, with kind of what you know and why you went, uh, whatever her overtures to um, the uh, philosopher king of Orville were, uh, it would seem, uh, uh, it would be a safe assumption, I think, for, for Maka that um, whether it was Umos herself or someone close to her read this document and that that spawned the mission, this would be a logical thing that they were after in Orville. Because really, going with what you've learned since about how um, the rest of Gren views humans and specifically Orville, um, all of this tracks pretty cleanly with like, it, you'd have to be pretty desperate to go knock on their door because they're viewed so poorly and as such kind of lesser beings that there would have to be a damn good reason. And like, granted, their science seems pretty up to snuff, but so is Apex's. So yes, it would seem that this was President Umos's goal in, or at least that she was trying to um, reclaim the sample. Now, beyond that, based on Umos and what you've seen, you can't be certain that her intent was to reintegrate that sample into the cluster in an attempt to heal it. It may have just been, we'll grow this cluster to give us a new source of Andara. But um, whatever the motive, the intent was clear to try and reclaim this gift that had been given uh back in um uh, amala solaris's day duncan are you aware of any contact between orville and bleen prior to my visit to your kingdom not in any of the records since Orville became a flying city. The uh, the philosopher king attempted to, uh, as as I think Duncan, both you and Gwendolyn would know, um, he was constantly trying to get recognized. It was a bit of a kind of imagine this in North Korean terms, where it's like Kim Jong Un would love nothing more than for everyone to be like, "Yes, you're a respected world leader," along with the rest of us. Let's all go for dinner and talk about world affairs. Like there was always that sense of like, "Hey, me too." <laughs> like include me. What about me? Hey, hey, you guys, hey. I mean, like, Gwendolyn, uh, I assume you'd be listening to this conversation because you're in the jail cell with yeah. them. But, like, you distinctly remember how big a deal it was that these turtle fuckers mm -hmm. were coming to visit Orville and that they had previously rebuked, re like, there had been nothing but rebukes from from uh, the, um, uh, the down low um, for everything. And Gwendolyn, from what you've learned, and Duncan, I think you'd read this pretty cleanly too, a lot of the um, the haughtiness of Orvel and Orvelian government is clearly like a like it's the little it's the little dog syndrome. Like it was a lot of like oh fuck all those guys down there. It was just because they wouldn't return your calls. So this does track. It would make sense to both of you that this would be a reason the philosopher king would actually get an audience if the uh, the people of Bleen knew something. Also, in terms of history, um, both Duncan and Gwendolyn, can you roll me history checks, please? Totally. Nine. Eight. Oof. <laughs> um, History is not a strength from a boy. Fair enough. Um, you are both aware that um, when Orvel was founded, when Amala founded uh, Orvel, having... Um, defeated uh, the Necrotists and kind of like freed Gren, united all the people and like freed Gren from, from the grips of, of destruction. Um, many gifts were, were rained down upon, upon her as kind of like the hero of the realm. Uh, you, neither of you are familiar with like a jar of spores, yeah. but um, it could well be amongst the, uh, the sort of most, I don't want to say holy, but the most revered um, gifts in the treasury. 
Like there's a huge treasury in the palace in Orvel that neither of you would really have had access to because it's that even as a princess Gwendolyn, like it's just too fancy. It's like yeah. the king can go in there or the queen or the ruler, but like no one else is really allowed in. But odds are it's like, you know, like like any royal receiving gifts, it's probably like on a shelf of honor with several other things somewhere in there. But neither of you are are specifically familiar with whether this exists. Okay. So I think obviously it did exist at some point, this thing. And there's been no contact in advance, so it hasn't been handed off to the turtles. There's just been kind of letters sent and not replied to. Maka, if we found it, undoubtedly you could find it if we could give you access to a treasury to wander around and find a pure sample of the cluster. Princess, here's the larger question for you. If Maka and the turtles help liberate Orvel, are you willing to give them this Andara to heal Jassy? Well, I mean, why wouldn't I be? You sometimes make irrational decisions that I don't understand based on ego. So I just wanted to rule out that fact in advance. Well, I mean, it's just sitting in our treasury, like doing nothing. And obviously it can like help with like everything we want to do. All right. right. So Maka, it sounds like you can make an offer to your people. If the turtles will assist in the liberation of Orville, we can get them the Andara and you so that you can heal your god and end this strange deathless blight. Is it Andara or Glamora? Um, it's, both. it's both. Okay. I don't think anyone has... Uh, you probably don't have the full I think context as I on it. I understand it, Andara is like... The manufactured, like branded, yes, kind of product. Yeah. Right? basically. So, Glamora Glamora, is the more raw material. Yeah, Glamora is is the cluster. Uh, it's the biolium cluster. So it's just what's out out and around and floating around and, and is the thing. Um, and Dara is the uh, the the initial processed version of it that basically turns it into a um, a multi purpose. Like if you imagine um, Glomera as the uh, the raw material, and Dara is the slightly processed material that can. De- um, in terms of plastics, this would be like, and Dara is like, ever- or sorry, um, Glomera is everything that goes into plastic, and then and Dara is plastic, and then Sundara and other things are derivatives of this kind of. Gotcha. To use the expanse terms, proto molecule, but basically a thing that you can <laughs> then use for a bunch of different purposes. But yes, uh, by the time it's in Dara, it's been processed. So that's the thing that that Maka is now realizing is the issue is like he'd be giving out like little pots of Glomera and they'd be processing that into Indara to be then used by the wider world for a variety of things. Admittedly, they found a bunch of uses for it that he would never have found, but at the cost of taking Glomera out of the, the cycle. Right. So I think, yeah, you... We can get you that thing if you can get the turtles to help liberate Orville, because otherwise we can't get access to the treasury because of the army of friggin' evil. What the hell are they called again? Those Sinkai. Black, black and white. Sinkai. What are, yeah, those damn Sinkai. That's the name. That's the name. I knew it the whole time. I hate them. Friends, I fear that my more mortal sensibilities may cloud my judgment on this. Why should the people of Bleen be spared the fate they have put upon themselves? Well, I mean, there's sort of two reasons. There's a functional necessity and then there's an ethical morality. Functional necessity... Uh, we need an army to defeat the Sinkai. There are way more than three of us can defeat on our own. So the turtles are strong and numerous. There is a functional requirement, and we can't get back what you need without them. The ethical morality side of things is not all turtles are aware of this or what has, this cost has been, what the process is, and what has happened. Undoubtedly, the leadership of the turtles are absolutely corrupt and have potentially sacrificed the world for their own short-term gain. And I would be the first one to help you build the machine that would hang them all. But damning the general population and people who did not have the power to countermand those decisions or even the information to challenge them, that's not fair. 
in that sense, you should be doomed for being a tortal because they betrayed you. I would welcome it. But you are right. There are innocents in this. Hmm. There must be a reckoning for those that knew and willingly bastardized the cluster hmm, for their personal gain. But, hmm, yes, thank you, friends, for providing this clarity to me. I, I thank you. If you weren't already a cleric, I would name you a Dawnbreaker, friend. This episode of Curse Code and Crowd Sound was mixed and edited by Laura Hamstra, and the campaign was created by Tom McGee. Our original theme music was composed by Landon Noblock, and Curse Code and Crown's logo was created by the brilliant Decapitated Markers. If you want to follow our players or our DM on Twitter, you can reach out to Laura at EL Hamstring, Ryan at the Ryan LeBlanc. Tyler at Tyler underscore Hewitt, Tom McGee at McGeeTD, or you can message our whole company at Dum Dum Dice. So please join us again for more Curse, Code, and Crown! Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half-Blind Prophet, James Quayar, Charles Grams, Christopher Little, Sue One, George Dolby, One True Artistry, Orion Birchfield, Lorda Bradovic, Noel Lewis, Scott Garland, Anthony Griffin, Chet Awesome Laser, Jordan Neesmith, Benjamin V, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Taryn Hefner, Cade Peters, Richard Cranium, Christian Mendez, Anna Zed, Eric Williams, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Great Dane, Acrix, Cameron Ezel, Grandma Likes D&D, and Jill and Noel LaPlante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs>